The next thing I do, and this really is uh, probably the most interesting part, is I just use a tube of regular oil paint, raw umber, which is a dark, dark brown. I put it either on a sponge or a brush, it doesn't matter. Now I'm not going to do the whole chair at once, I'll have to work on the section. Now that's not very pretty at this point. Then I take a, either a soft rag or, or a paper towel or something and sort of go in circular motions softly across the entire surface. And this, this dark paint will uh, go down into all the grooves and cracks. Almost all the paint comes off, all the antiquity. Then towards the edge, it stays dark. It gives it a very pleasant, old, worn-out look. Now, I think you're familiar with the fact that oil painting doesn't dry for a long, long time, easily overnight. So, you don't have to be in any hurry. But now, obviously, the rest of it, I can't do that way because the paint, the antiquing, doesn't go down into those deep grooves. So I get me an old brush that's not worth anything more, and I go around these turned areas. That would finish it off after I have gotten all of this chair covered and, and wiped off with the antique process, I will uh, put a two coats after this antique gets real dry, which is going to take at least one day. And don't be surprised if the weather is right and everything, but it takes two. But when that gets, then you put at least one more coat of polyurethane varnish or lacquer, whatever they call it, on top of the dry oil paint. This finished all over. I had, I added these uh, checks on here after we did our last demonstration because I just felt like it wasn't busy enough. This needed special attention because we really wanted to show up. Now I wipe it off and you look at that. Isn't that nice? That adds a lot to that chair. That's uh, something you might want to watch. It's, uh, it's kind of like you have to do it with a brush like you did those turn pieces because of the undercuts in the wood. Now all you have to do is finish the rest of the surface of the chair, uh, polyurethane that goes on top of it for protection. I'm headed down a road, ain't taking my time, I'm making my way to the city limits, cause there's a girl waiting for me, somewhere down that line. This is an old, old window sash with four panes of glass in it. I'm going to paint one of each of the four seasons on these window panes. And the first thing I do, since this is glass, is to have to render it opaque so I can paint on top of the glass. But I don't want anything underneath to show through, glass being as transparent as it is. The sky is prepared now. I let it dry before I put the clouds on. So, this is going to be summer, so the bottom of the painting will start with a prime coat of green.
and prepare for the, some yellow, which will go on top of the uh, of the grass. In other words, at the point where it meets the sky. Now I am probably ready to paint some clouds. I will say the paint has to be dry enough. That the, yeah, the the, the uh, instrument that I use to paint, either a brush or a finger or a sponge in this case. Now there are many techniques for painting clouds. Sponge is, is not even the most popular one, but it's going to work because it, it does pretty well for glass. This is, the grass is beginning to get dry. The cloud wall with well, I let the cloud dry, and let's start another layer of grass. This, now I'm going to start painting a tree trunk, which, in this case, the undercoat of the tree trunk will be pure black. We'll put the form in with colors after I get this done. Now, as you can see, that wet background is going to come through. That's the reason I painted this tree trunk black, because uh, when it uh, is wet like that underneath, that background color shows through. Add some brown to that wet tree trunk. in with that tree trunk and we'll start seeing some bark like texture going on now I'm doing this all wet on wet that's the nature of glass glass is not easy to paint on unless you have experienced it a lot which I have done in, in the business that I'm in we use glass for a lot of things. Old window sashes, like the one I'm doing here, are very popular. Now we are getting ready to paint some tree leaves on top of the tree trunk, also on top of the sky. Uh, these leaves will, be, of course, be a different color of green and the grass so I will mix is getting uh, shined on by the sun then the shadows are almost black okay now we're going to go into the tree trunk again and try to uh, give the texture of bark a little bit more clearly than I had done while the trunk was still so wet. Now I'm going to take a little white and this, what this little bit of white does, of course there's not usually any white on a tree trunk, but in this case we show it just as a value so that you know that the tree trunk is round. When you're painting a picture on a piece of glass, you really do have to define everything. Now, I've got the tree trunk pretty well seated onto the ground. I'm going to take a real thin number one liner brush and put some more grass taller grass because the old boy that owns this tree hasn't been mowing it but that's his problem not ours we're going to paint it the way it is unmowed country boy in the mountains 
mountains I call home Western North Carolina Is where I learned to get along And Papa taught me how to be A southern gentleman Granny showed me all the strength Of a woman's gentle hands And Mama taught me how to face the world on headstrong She said life will bring you problems You gotta keep on moving on And I wanna go back To my family and to my home I wanna go back That's why I sing this song I wanna go back Leave the world outside in the cold Down the back of road